when my mother was diagnosed with um, what she finally died of was lung cancer, um, she was in Arizona on vacation and she started feeling very poorly suddenly and the doctor diagnosed her as having a very short time left. So she came home and the first place she went pretty well off the airplane was into a hospital. So I went to see her and, you know, they had a chest tube put in her to drain the lungs um, of fluid and such. And she was in some discomfort from that and she kept saying, I want to go home. I want to go home. I don't want to be here. And, you know, we were very frank with each other. I said, you know, you're, you're on the way out, you know. And she was quite frank, too. She said, death no, holds no terrors for me, but I don't want to die here. So I kidnapped her. I, there wasn't really any mechanism at the time that I knew about. So I got a hospital bed, moved into her apartment with all her stuff around her got visiting nurses and kind of lined all this stuff up so that she could be at home for the last couple of weeks of her life and turned her death into a family event. When she finally died, I was holding her hand, my sister was holding her other hand, my two brothers were there. And it was a terribly important thing for me in particular to be able to have that sense of finality, of leaving. You know, it's, I think it's important for us to be able to see and to embrace death and to not fear it. It's a very natural thing and in some ways it's a very beautiful thing. So that experience with my mother and having to intervene in the medical system in order to make that possible gave me some of the understanding and the groundwork for what the palliative end of life end of Room 217 was all about. I also realized when I joined the organization that most of the other people involved have had some kind of very similar experience, either a palliative experience or they're looking after a relative or a friend who has dementia.